Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about Pentecost and its relationships to the covenants. Now, this is something I've been looking at for a number of years now, and it appears as though the covenants that we hear about in the Bible, there's actually a total of eight of them. The ones that we know the date in which they came down seem to all be centered around Pentecost. So it appears to me that Pentecost is the season of the covenant. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. Now, I know what you're thinking, and that is that Pentecost is the day in which the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples. We read about that in the book of Acts in chapter 2. Verse 1 says, And when Pentecost day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed like individual flames of fire alighting on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. So this is a well-known event that happened on Pentecost. And we know that this event has some relationship to the Divinic Covenant or the New Covenant that we know that is supposed to descend upon man sometime around the day of the Lord. But as you can see, there are eight covenants total dating all the way back to Adam and the Edemic Covenant, which you read about in Genesis chapter 1. Now, I don't know anything about the date in which that covenant was given because it's not written in scripture anywhere that I know of. But the next covenant that you see is the covenant given to Noah. So let's take a look at it. Now, we can hear about the institution of this covenant in the book of Jubilees in chapter 6. We'll be jumping all over the book of Jubilees, this book that was written by Moses. But we're going to start with chapter six because we're starting with Noah. Now we're going to drop all the way down to verse 15, which says, And he gave to Noah and his sons a sign that there should not again be a flood on the earth. Now, this is important because we recognize this sign as being a part of the covenant. You see in verse 16, which says, he set his bow in a cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that there should not again be a flood on the earth to destroy it all the days of the earth. So here it is that the covenant given to Noah is being established on first fruits. Now, don't get this confused with what they call the Noahide laws. Those are not actually the biblical laws given to Noah. But anyway, we'll save that for another class. Now, let's look at verse 17, which says, For this reason it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets that they should celebrate the Feast of Weeks in this month once a year to renew the covenant every year. So here we see a connection being made between the Feast of Weeks, or what we know as Pentecost, and the covenant given to Noah. What we're reading here is that the Feast of Weeks was actually written on the heavenly tablets for the renewal of that covenant. Now, let's look at verse 18, which says, This whole festival was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation to the days of Noah, 26 jubilees and five weeks of years. And that's the important part about this book of jubilees, is that it actually tells us the timing of all of these events that are going on. But anyway, it says, and Noah and his sons observed it for seven jubilees and one week of years till the day of Noah's death. And from the day of Noah's death, his sons did away with it until the days of Abraham and they eat blood. Now, from what I'm understanding, Noah was the first one to start keeping the Feast of Weeks, even though they were written on the holy tablets. But right after his death, his sons forgot about the Feast of Weeks and they started eating with the blood again. But we'll get into that in other videos. What we really want to get out of Jubilees in chapter six for this video is that the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost is to be performed once a year to renew the covenant. So there is a definite connection between the covenant given to Noah and the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot. Now let's look at Abraham only because the next covenant given was to Abraham and see if there too is a connection between the Feast of Weeks 
and the Abrahamic covenant. Now, since this class is all about the timing of this covenant, we'll come to the book of Jubilees in chapter 15 and verse 1, where it says, And in the fifth year of the fourth week of this Jubilee, in the third month, in the middle of the month, Abraham celebrated the feast of first fruits of the grain harvest. So here we are talking about Abraham keeping the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot in the middle of the third month. Now, we know how the sacred calendar works by now. If you don't, I can give you link after link on videos where we've established how the sacred calendar works. And it always starts off with the new moon as the first day of the month. But when you look to find the middle of the month, you always look to the 15th day of the month. That's when the moon is full and is almost exactly the middle of every month, the 15th day of the sacred month. So we see in verse one, Abram celebrating the feast of first fruits in the middle of the third month. And in verse two, we see that he made his Pentecost offering. And we see in verse three that the Lord appeared to Abraham. And we see in verse four that he established his covenant with Abraham during this appearance. So when we put all of this together, we see that the Abrahamic covenant was given to Abraham during the first fruit season. It doesn't tell us the exact date of this event, but we know that it was during first fruits. Now, whereas in chapter 15, we understand that the Abraham celebrated first fruits in the middle of the month. When we come over to chapter 44, we can see exactly when this so-called middle of the month was when we start to look at verses one through four. This is talking about Jacob or Israel as his name was changed to. Verse one says, and Israel took his journey from Haram from his house on the new moon of the third month. And he went on his way of the well of the oath and he offered a sacrifice to the God of his father, Isaac, on the seventh of the month. So here we are in the third month, which we've already established from the Abrahamic covenant and the Noahic covenant that the feast of first fruits is supposed to be in the third month. But we see here that this is the first day of the month or the beginning of the third month that Israel is making a sacrifice. Then we look at verse two. The reason why Israel is making this sacrifice is because he has just been invited to come to Egypt with his son, Joseph. But because of a dream he had had, he was a little bit worried about going into Egypt. So when you look in verse three, you see that after he made that sacrifice on the seventh day of the month in verse one, he has now waited an additional seven days. Perchance he could see a vision on whether he should go to Egypt or not. So that takes us to the 14th day of the month. And verse four says, and he celebrated the harvest festival of first fruits with old grain. So here is Jacob celebrating Pentecost on the 14th day of the third month. But look what happens next. Verse five says, and on the 16th, the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here I am. And he said unto him, I am the God of your fathers. So here again, the Lord has made an appearance to the children of Israel during Pentecost season. This one is exactly on the 16th day of the month, which corresponds to what we read in the story of Abraham when the Lord appeared to him in the middle of the month. And maybe that's why it's written like this instead of Abraham telling us the exact date, because you would have the date of Pentecost on the 14th day of the month, then a Sabbath day on the 15th day of the month. And then all of these appearances by the father establishing all of these covenants on the 16th day of the month. And that's why we said in this video that Pentecost is the season of the covenant. And the next covenant we see on the list is the covenant that was given to Moses or the Mosaic covenant. And once again, we could come to the book of Jubilees to find out when this covenant came down to Moses. This time we're in chapter one and verse one, which says, and it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt in the third month, 
on the 16th day of the month that God spake to Moses. So here it is. Once again, the third month and the 16th day of the month is when our father has came down and spoken with the children of Israel, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and even the disciples that we read about in Acts seem to all be happening around the Pentecost season. But look at what he's saying to Moses here. Come up to me in the mount and I will give thee the two tables of stone of the law and of the commandment, which I have written that thou mayest teach them. So here it is on the 16th day of the third month that he's calling Moses up to Mount Horeb to receive the covenant. The two tables of stone that we know as the covenant being received on the 16th day of the month. And of course, the next covenant that we hear about is the covenant that the Messiah was talking about during the Last Supper. But that brings us back to Acts in chapter two, because it was 50 days after his resurrection that they all received the Holy Spirit, which was our father descending upon the disciples during the Pentecost season, just like he had done for Noah, Abraham, Jacob, and Moses. So how does this all work? Well, it all starts with Passover back in the first month. That's the beginning of what the Messiah called the acceptable year of the Lord. After baptism, Passover is the beginning of the construction of the third temple that is to be built on our hearts. Then you have the week-long Feast of Unleavened Bread, where we are to study the Father's Word for a week. Then you have a 50-day wait period before the Holy Spirit comes down with the covenant on Pentecost. This is what the Messiah was referring to as the way. This is how we get the new covenant etched into our hearts. After we've done all of the preparations in the first month, then we can expect visitations from our father in the middle of the third month. So if you have recently been baptized and or kept Passover for the first time this year, you can expect big things around the middle of the third month, which falls sometime in the last week of June in the year 2021. But those who have been on this path for a long time may not experience as much as those who are new, and those who are mockers probably won't experience anything at all. But if we are able to recognize anything happening either way, we know that our father is behind the scenes working for our benefit. So we'll just continue to stay on the path doing what we are supposed to be doing, mining the feast days and the Sabbath days. So with that, I'm going to say happy first fruits, everyone. Shabbat Shalom.